This is Twit. Last Thursday, Reuters News Service published an article titled, Russian Hackers Were Inside Ukraine Telecom's Giant for Months. So here's some new information that was not public before that Reuters just published. They said, January 4th, Russian hackers were inside Ukrainian telecoms giant Kyivstar's system from at least May last year in a cyber attack that should serve as a, quote, big warning, unquote, to the West. Ukraine's cyber spy chief told Reuters. The hack was one of the most dramatic since Russia's full-scale invasion nearly two years ago, knocked out services provided by Ukraine's biggest telecoms operator for some 24 million users for days starting December 12th. In an interview, Ilya Vitek, head of the security service of Ukraine's, that's SBU, cybersecurity department, disclosed exclusive details about the hack, which he said, which I would call it more than a hack, which he said caused, because he said, caused disastrous destruction and aimed to land a psychological blow while gathering intelligence. He said, quote, this attack is a big message, a big warning, not only to Ukraine, but for the whole Western world to understand that no one is actually untouchable, unquote. He noted that Kyivstar was a wealthy private company with heavy investments in cybersecurity. The attack wiped almost everything, including thousands of virtual servers and PCs, he said, describing it as probably the first example of a destructive cyber attack that, quote, completely destroyed the core of a telecoms operator, unquote. Later, following some investigation on December 27th, he said that they found that the hackers probably attempted to penetrate Kyivstar originally in March or earlier, you know, much earlier last year. He said, quote, for now, we can say securely that they were in the system at least since May of 2023. I cannot say right now when they had full access, probably at least since November. The SBU assessed the attackers would have been able to steal personal information, understand the location of phones, intercept SMS messages, and perhaps steal telegram accounts with the level of access they had gained. A Kyivstar spokesman said the company was working closely with the SBU to investigate the attack and would take all necessary steps to eliminate future risks, blah, blah, blah. Of course, that's, you know, the, 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 (laughs) the PR guy at the company that got blasted. Uh, And following the major break, there were a number of additional attempts aimed at dealing more damage to the operator. Kyivstar is the biggest of Ukraine's three main telecoms operators, and there are some 1.1 million Ukrainians who live in small towns and villages where there are no other choices, no other providers. People rushed to buy other SIM cards after the attack, which created large lines. ATMs using Kyivstar SIM cards for the Internet all st- ceased to work, and the air raid sirens, which are used during missile and drone attacks, also did not function properly in some regions. Post-attack forensics are made more difficult because of the wiping of Kyivstar's entire infrastructure. But Vidic said he was pretty sure it was carried out by Sandworm a Russian military intelligence cyber warfare unit that has been linked to cyber attacks in Ukraine and elsewhere. A year ago, Sandworm penetrated a Ukrainian telecoms operator, but was detected by Kyiv because the SBU had itself been inside Russian systems. Vidic said the pattern of behavior suggested telecoms operators could remain a large target of Russian hackers And during 2023, the SBU said it had thwarted over 4,500 major cyber attacks 
on Ukrainian government bodies and critical infrastructure. So, okay, again, sadly, there's no actual reason to believe that things are any different anywhere else. Ukraine is using the same technology as everyone else. As I've said, all of the evidence we have suggests that our actual security is far more soft than we would like. What's generally and thankfully missing is the motivation to abuse it. But the rise of cryptocurrency created the motivation to extort enterprises that smugly believe until then that their IT security budget was sufficient and that the threats were being overblown. No one thinks that any longer. The last thing we need is an escalation. Wow. And, uh-huh. I know. It is it is sobering. You know, we've got little poking around the edges, but uh, as I said, I hope that we're able to give as good as we get because, you know, we only hear about attacks against us. We don't get any information about, you know, what we're doing, uh, you know, how we're in other people's networks. But uh, as I said, there's a career there. I also think there's some reluctance to go uh, full bore on this because you're really, uh, I mean, the, the obvious end game is attacking infrastructure, which uh, could be, you know, horrific to civilians. Well, and and when you do so, you're no longer covert. Right. So it is a use it and then lose right. it. So well, and the threat nobody of re wants retaliation is, is so yeah. strong because you don't need, it's not like building a nuclear weapon. Uh, you know, you need a few good hackers. And probably almost any nation state could muster up enough uh, hackers to be a threat. Leo, North Korea. Right. Like, where, where did they get their education? Yeah. They didn't come over here and get taught at MIT. Actually, so... apparently some did. But anyway, oh, oh. <laughs> covertly. But, <laughs> but, uh, but that's the point, is that this information is out there. And it doesn't cost a lot to, to create a uh, fancy bear. So it doesn't, it, you know, it's really an interesting issue. Um, yeah, well, we're, yeah, it's you, not the end of the line. Do not on this one, need, you, you do not need huge rooms of, no. of, of spitting centrifuges no, exactly. and, and years of time. Right. You know, you need literally some guy in his mother's basement. <laughs> literally. <laughs> hey there, Scott Wilkinson here. In case you hadn't heard, Home Theater Geeks is back. Each week, I bring you the latest audio video news, tips and tricks to get the most out of your AV system, product reviews, and more. You can enjoy Home Theater Geeks only if you're a member of Club Twit, which costs seven bucks a month. Or you can subscribe to Home Theater Geeks by itself for only $2.99 a month. I hope you'll join me for a weekly dose of Home Theater Geekitude.